I'm the Adult Services Librarian at the Bonnie Lake Pierce County Library. I have been there for a little over a year, a year in August in this position. Um, before that, I had a floating position, and so I serve uh, six branches in this kind of part of the county. So uh, Bonnie Lake, Buckley, Ording, South Hill, Graham, Eatonville uh, were the branches that I roamed between. Um, and I've been with Pierce County Library for about three and a half years. So uh, I'm really excited to be here today and talk to you guys about some of our, um, some of the virtual, or not virtual, some of the electronic resources um, that we have at Pierce County Library um, that are freely available to you using your library card um, and that your tax dollars are paying for. So um, take advantage of them, use them. We've got some really good stuff. And so uh, I'm gonna focus on two main things. I'm gonna go over, um, we have a dedicated job and business center website and I'll go over that a little bit, not super in depth. Um, and then I'm gonna focus on a couple of our um, general business databases and kind of different ways you could use those. Um, and so it's going to be kind of, at the end, I'm going to put up the closest thing I've got to a business card, which is a proof of my business card. Um, and we can always make, uh, you can email me and we can set up a virtual appointment to go over. Um, if you want to dig in a little bit more on one of the databases or something, we can set up a one-on-one -on -one time to do that. Um, and so I'll put up my, uh, my info at the, end of the, at the end of the discussion for that. So um, I'm going to share my screen. Or technically, I'm going to share it right now. Okay. So, aha, there you are. That's there. Um, so, uh, to start off, we're going to start at our website at piercecountylibrary.org. That can be a mouthful type. And so, I will let you know in my pro, my pro tip, which is um, you can also access it by logging on to pcls.us. And that's only seven characters. But as opposed to the entirety of piercecountylibrary.org, it'll redirect you here. Um, so that's that's the only way I access it now because I've gotten so lazy. Um, but you can do that. So, uh, so if you scroll down, you'll see there are a handful of buttons here on our website, and they take us to different areas, um, different kind of subsections. So if you've got hold materials that are in and you want to uh, set up a library curbside appointment, you can do that here. Um, we've got you know different homework help resources you could go to there. Um, we have a partnership with the Pierce County Elections. Um, we're doing um, what's called voter point of assistance on voter days since there's same day voter registration and um, other things like that. So folks have, you know, didn't get their ballot, need to print a new ballot. Um, other stuff, the library, Pierce County Library System, Tacoma Public Library, and Puyallup Public Library all have uh, that partnership. So there's info there. But I'm going to focus on two things. Uh, the job and center right here and our research tab here. So first thing I'm going to do is go into the job and business center if it decides to load. It's my internet decides to be slow. Huh, okay. So the way that this broke down, it's got uh, four main kind of hubs or spokes, however you wanna talk about it. Get hired, start a small business technology certifications life after high school, depending on what you're looking for. And so each of these you'll go to, uh, then we'll have links that are similar. So if you're, you know, a job seeker who's looking for, you know, a new position, you'll come over here. It's got a bunch of different uh, resources that could be helpful. So um, whether it's finding a job, creating a resume, prepping for an interview, updating skills, that, that then takes you to a list that has additional um, resources. And so, uh, you know, and it'll let you know if it's if a library card is required or if it's just available online. So like library partner resource means you can just go there. You don't need your uh, library card to log in. Um, but so yeah, so there's get hired. There's life after high school, which is which is uh, focused on recent high school graduates and trying to figure out career paths and kind of ways you can go. So there's like, you know, exploring careers, finding a job, go to college and different information then within each um, both that are ours or college. Um, and then the main two that I was going to focus on are start a small business and technology certifications. So our technology certifications are a really cool um, program. So for free, as opposed to costing a bunch of money, you can get um, the software company backed certifications of like expertise. So um, you go into learn to get started. The main one that they highlight here is uh, the Microsoft Office 
specialist series. So general Excel, Excel expert, Word, Word expert, uh, access and access expert, I think as well. Yeah. Um, so you can, uh, basically what happens is to register, you fill out a little survey. Based on that, we create a learning plan for you independently. You follow through the learning plan. Once you follow through, um, you will get essentially a certificate that allows you to take the certification exam for free. Um, and if you pass, you've done it for free and then you'll have um, the Microsoft certifications, which are really good for resumes. Depending on what you're looking to do, it can also brush up new skills. Um, as you'll see next to it over here, we also have courses in the Microsoft Technology Associate, which are the um, more kind of computer science dedicated IT focused coursework. So, you know, getting, you know, having your Excel certification is going to work if you're, you know, in some way, you know, if you're working in an office and in ways like that, whereas you can get, you know, CSS, HTML and HTML5 certifications, which are, you know, more applicable if you're looking at doing IT or doing computer stuff. We also have further on down, those are the ones that are focused on because we have the Microsoft suite at our physical branches. So in normal circumstances, when uh, the branches are operating, you could come in and you could practice on our machines. Um, but we also have, have it set up with Adobe, with Intuit QuickBooks and with Unity. Um, we just don't have the software for it. So that's why it hangs out down here. Um, so if you have these softwares, you can still go through and do those and train on those and get certifications in those as well. So, um, and again, yeah, and, uh, and free. So go back. And then start a small business. And so it's focused on different kind of areas of what you might be looking for if you're looking to start a small business or thinking about it. So, you know, planning, writing a business plan, doing market research, getting financing, setting stuff up. Um, and they each have, you know, they'll take you to different little uh, areas. Yeah, so. Um, and then I'll go back and I'll focus. So I was gonna, I'm gonna highlight three data bases. So when you go in, uh, to look, you can either access the databases that way, which is helpful if you, for instance, don't remember what the names of the databases are, just what they are. So if you're like, I don't remember what the name of that um, consumer information database was, but I can, I can go through and find the market research that way. Um, but so you'll come in here, it's got a big A to Z listing of the types. You'll choose business and investing and that's where our stuff lives. Um, so you will need to log in with a library card. Um, I will, at the end of this, I will go over how you can get a new library card. If you have had one in the past, you can call, at this point, we've got staff in all of our branches. So you could call Bunny Lake, you could call Sumner, you could call the Buckley Library. Um, and if you don't know your card number, it'll, you know, they can check and see if you've got a card, answer a few questions to confirm your identity, they can give you your card number and you can log, log in. Um, if you have your lock card number and you don't remember your PIN, PIN is typically the last four digits of your phone number. Um, so I'm going to say, as an example, I've decided, uh, and so I'm going to go to demographic, oh, sorry, demographics now. And so this is from Gale Business, and it allows, doo -doo -doo, all kind, it's got a bunch of different information. So let's say that I'm looking for it. Uh, at the far end here, it's got tutorials where it kind of goes in a little more in depth on how you can do, you know, specific portions utilizing the um, utilizing the different reports and information they have. Um, but you can do research on people and companies. So uh, up here right now, it's going to pull for the entire US. But if I make this Bonnie Lake, Washington, it'll now make that. So any reports it's going to pull is going to be stuff just about Bonnie Lake. Um, so I want to do a business list, let's say. And I want businesses that have a uh, cafe in the name, let's say. So I can do a search here. It's going to pull anything with that in the company name. One to zero of zero. Apparently nothing that this has in Bonnie Lake has cafe in the name. Uh, we can go back and search, but we could do coffee. That might be easier. I can think of a lot of those. <laughs> it's got a couple, a couple examples that we have that are had in Bonnie Lake. Um, 
and there's a couple different ways. So once you click on one, you can do it a couple ways. So you can view it on a map. So if you, for instance, have, uh, I did this with, I did it with coffee with Sumner earlier and it pulled up like seven different places. And then you could, you know, see that they kind of focus on the core of Sumner. And there's like, you know, one out here by the YMCA and one out here, you know, a coffee uh, roaster is out here, you know, where it's industrial. And but then there's the core area where they hang out. So you can, you can, you know, do this and look and see where, where things are located as far as if you're looking for where there might be demand for it or where there's an absence competition if you're looking for that. Um, you can also do details and it'll bring up, um, it'll bring up a profile here. So it's got, you know, profiles on the industry as far as if you're, um, if you're using the SIC code or the NAICS code. Um, some of the searching stuff here that they use, they want the NAICS code um, for figuring it out. Just, you know, it'll have usually like location employees. It depends on, you know, the, the information that's available. This one doesn't have a ton, so it doesn't have like the executives, but it'll sometimes have, you know, the executive directory. It'll have issues like that. It'll also give you businesses that are nearby, which will give you an area. Um, and you can use that to, um, you know, check around and do stuff also go into demographics here and so we're still doing this for Bonnie Lake and so let's say for instance I am interested so I was looking up coffee because I want to start an internet cafe and I'm gonna look up uh, I, I want to do a summary of non-alcoholic beverage consumption in Bonnie Lake so let's see Is beverages non alcoholic. I'll run the report. And I'll bring up a big old thing here. So it'll have overall 2020 demographics for Bonnie Lake. So total households, you know, owned versus rented, population density, all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, and then it'll bring them down here. So these are all on an index. And so that means that. Uh, 100 would indicate average, national average consumption of an item. So um, anything below 100 would indicate below average, anything over 100 would equal above. So for instance, I can see from here that in Bonnie Lake, you are more than likely to drink Diet Coke or Diet Pepsi, uh, but you are less likely to drink whatever the difference of forms used Mo whole bean is for ground, as opposed to Mo types decaffeinated, which is also lower. So, uh, you know, there's some of the jargon that you have to kind of suss out, but, you know, you can figure out that more people do use hot cocoa, but fewer people use instant iced tea. Um, so there's, you know, and they've got this for a whole bunch of different stuff. Less likely to drink Mountain Dew, less likely to drink 7-Up, um, based on, yeah, consumer data. Uh, and so there's, you know, a bunch, you know, many, many, there's beverages. There's a whole different, um, and it, you know, it can take some time to tool around with just because there is so much, but there's a whole lot of different uh, information that you can pull. So for instance, white domestic white wines, more than average, about average, or red. And so yeah, it's just different stuff there. Um, yeah, you can find that here. And um, there's also doing reports, which will do slightly different stuff. So you can do, um, the one that was in here that was, I thought really interesting is that you can assess market risk. And so um, I think this one, there wasn't anything here in Bonnie Lake, but let's take a look. Um, but basically you can look up and if you have the NAICS code, for instance, for the one that you had just looked up and pulled it, you can run it and it'll basically look at how many businesses total have this classification in the community you're searching and how many of them have gone out of business. And so it'll have what the national, you know, the national rate is over here for this item. So for cafeterias, grill, buffets, and buffets, which is not quite what I was looking for. Uh, there's a, about a 40% uh, failure rate. Uh, in Bunny Lake, there's a zero because we don't have any. So, um, you know, that's, you know, when that's the case, it's not necessarily, the most helpful, but you can see what the what the average rate is as far as if you're trying to assess risk and stuff like that. Um, and then I'm going to jump down to 
So we also have what's called the Business Plans Handbooks eBooks. It is a digitized collection of about 30 volumes, I think, of from Gale of sample business plans. And so you can look up what your, um, the business you want to start and it'll bring up sample, uh, sample business plans that you can utilize. One of the things that's nice too, because this was available for, is that you see, can see change over time and what focus has changed to. So for instance, there's an internet cafe business plan here you'll see from 1998. And there's also one from 2014. And so slightly different, um, you know, the way that internet culture has grown and changed is very different over those two periods of time. Um, and so that can be helpful too, where you know, you know, they're not trying to base it off of, you know, something that has evolved since. Um, but yeah, it'll give you just like a whole breakdown. So it's got, you know, executive summary, mission statements, you know, potential pricing, all kinds of different stuff just as a sample to, to help you, um, you know, think through and if you're doing this kind of stage of business planning or looking to, um, to get investment doing a business plan. Uh, but it's got, yeah, it's just got a basic term search and it'll, it'll bring up. You can also, if you're, you know, if you really want to get in there and wait around, uh, you can open it by editions. This is the back book, the, the volume 28 from 2014. And you can see, uh, oh, they've got the whole breakdown here, but you know, Accounting firm, alcohol, clean, entertainment center. They've got all these different ones that break down and they're different uh, each of the years. And so it's got a lot of good information. And the last one I'm going to focus on today is, is called Invest Pierce County. This one you actually don't even need your library card to get into. Um, this one you can just access without having that. Um, it's from the Tacoma Pierce Economic uh, Development Bureau. And it is really cool. It's got a lot of um, a lot of power and a lot of ability to do a lot of things that are really impressive. So um, it essentially uses a lot of public information. It also uses GIS, so it'll, it'll overlay stuff on a map so you can you can see it while you're going through. So for instance, over here you can search. One of the things that it's trying to focus on is um, is rental and industrial property for use, and so. For instance, we can choose uh, the city. And let's say I've been looking around and I don't want to do it in Bonnie Lake. I've decided that I want to do it in Buckley because uh, they don't have really, a, there's you know the one kind of coffee shop in Buckley, but there's not a whole lot. And I can look up and I can see, oh, hey, look, there's you know three properties that are open in Buckley. I'm going to zoom in on Buckley a little bit. And you can see over here on the map, and it's got the little, you know, and as you go in closer, you'll start to see them. So yeah, we'll see, because we can see, we can see one of the properties. It'll break them all down once we're in close enough. Which I thought would be there. Oh, there we go. So you can see where they are. One of the nice with this is with the overlays is you can, so um, for instance, if I'm doing an internet cafe, I'm gonna want high speed internet. So I can look if we've got cable and DSL and it'll pop on overlays that'll let you know in the different colors. So. For instance, I don't have to worry because any of these properties in Buckley have have DSL and have cable. Um, as as an example, if I wanted, you know, I want it really fast. I want to do fiber optics. Not so much. So we can we can zoom out and see where fiber is out because it'll do for the whole county. So as we see further out over here, there's fiber. It's not so much out here. But uh, even if your search is focused over here, it will. Um, when you put any of the overlays on, it will do the overlay for the whole county. And actually beyond the county, it looks like it'll do it for the state too. Um, and there's a bunch of different things. So you can look up, you know, who the major employers are, different, you know, business and tax incentives. You can bring them up. So, you know, if you're looking for a, I want, you know, I want to put something in a federal opportunity zone, you can do that and it'll bring them all up for the whole county. Uh, it's got it, yeah, it just, you know, you can really tool around with it. It also, so that's just with the layers. It also has the le a legend over here. So there's the layers. Oh, and that's my timer for my rough time. Um, and so, yeah, it shows what's active is federal opportunity zones, which are in the blue here. And then if you open up here, it'll tell you that that's what those are in the blue. 
Uh, you can also do demographics. I'll do that real quick, just as an example. And it'll pull, uh, you know, different demographic layers. So let's say we're looking for behaviors. Let's see if I can find. Uh, so let, I'm deciding, I, maybe I want to do beer and wine at my internet cafe too. So let's see for Buckley if that's where I want to do it. Um, we can do in the last 30 days at a restaurant who's who has consumed you know what's it looking like for beer consumption at a restaurant in the last 30 days which is going to be a little interesting right now the state in more normal times or when things have rebounded it'll be a little clearer and so we've got the uh you know the overlay here and and we've got the key here and so we can see that oh the answer is you know 474.8 to 793 0.5999 people have consumed beer. And then you, you know, you can go over and you can see that over down around Ording, it's, uh, it's much higher. And so you can bop around and you can see a bunch of different little things uh, in there that way as well. And so, yeah, there's customers, which will clear all the stuff out and it'll go back to normal. Um, yeah, with any of these, they're, they're all really interesting and really powerful and can take some time to dig into, but they do have a lot of really cool Good information available for you, uh, and I've hit my I've hit my twenty, and so I'll uh, I'll stop rambling. The only thing I to say is if all PCLS and we and you don't have a library or you haven't had one anymore um, every couple of years, just for our data storage, if you haven't been you know actively using your card in two or three years, we um, we clear out accounts. Um, but so if you're getting a new card, you can go over here to services. And services programs. Fairly silly. Library card. I was looking for get. Get a library card. Um, so you can library card services. And you can apply for a library card online. It'll ask you to fill out. Um, you know, some information it'll give you, and once you're done with it, it'll give you automatically a, um, a digital barcode that you can use to log in and stuff until such time as we're open and you can go in and physically get a, get a library card. Um, so yeah, it comes in here, pretty simple. First name, last name, mailing address, um, info, and then this is just all that goes into doing your account. And it'll give you, once you've gone through it, it'll give you, um, it'll give you a, a, temp, a temporary until it gets replaced with a regular card uh, number that you can use um, for stuff without having to physically um, go into a branch or get a new card. So um, if you don't have a card, that's how you go about doing that. And I, uh, that's all that I have planned really. Um, and so I'm ready, I'm ready and available for any questions that you might have too. Jen, I saw you had one in the um, chat box. Um, do you want to go ahead and ask him? Sure. So, Patrick, I know in the past, um, kind of like that high school and beyond planning, I've usually gotten something probably physically in hand, like in the mail. I'm wondering if you have any online like flyers or just a one page kind of thing that I can throw in my newsletter to help direct kids here that has some of that that stuff like the high school and beyond planning, the tutoring, those types of things. Yeah, let me, uh, as I say, if you get me, let me open up so I can grab your, um, grab your email. Give me a second because I'll have to, as I say, that's, there's a whole team that runs that and I can definitely see about getting something for you on that. Um, I'll put it in the chat. Sweet. As I say, yeah, if you pop your, um, yeah, if you pop your email in the chat, ah, up here, and like it moved around on me. So yeah, if it, yeah, if you pop your pop your email, and I'll, I definitely, I'm sure that we've got something somewhere. And if not, I'll make something for you. So, because yeah, that's those are a lot of good resources and stuff, and you know, you don't necessarily. Sometimes it can be hard to be like, go to this website, and then it's like, well, let's show you what the website is. So, but yeah, well, yeah, I'll I'll look into that for you. Thank you. I know um, Thad and I, when we were at the, I was telling Patrick about this earlier, um, 
we were at one of the Communities for Families Coalition meetings. Um, and there was a girl that had come and presented, and I believe she was transitioning from the Sumner branch to the South Hill branch. Mm, yeah. um, and she came and gave a presentation on this. And there was a couple other things too that she had included that, cause she had a little bit longer time to speak. And it was just like that. And I was just like, All right, whoa, <laughs> they have some resources that we could use. Um, so it's, it, it really is interesting, especially cause there's a lot of resources like your um, consumer reports and whatnot. Um, that yeah. you have access to. Uh, there's, yeah, additionally, we have, yeah, we have consumer reports that are available. We have, um, we used to have, you know, volume after volume after volume of auto repair manuals. Instead, we have an electronic online database. Um, for those where you go on, you, you know, you get to it, you select your, your make, your model, your year, and it brings up everything that would be in an auto repair manual. Um, Milton and Sue's the publisher is on that. Um, yeah. Audio, but and then yeah, going into not even necessarily business dedicated stuff, ebooks and e audiobooks um, that are available for free, including on a Kindle too, since their format is special. But you can do, um, you can get them formatted for Kindle. You, you know, we've got uh, right now, we're not because of uh, testing with coronavirus spread, we're actually not circulating magazines, but we do have electronic magazine subscriptions where you can hop on through our website and you know check out any number of the magazine, any, a lot of magazines that we have physically in print and a number of magazines that we don't have physically in print, but we do have electronically. So um, yeah, there's a, there's a whole lot of, got a whole lot of stuff available also throw this up. I don't know if we're still sharing my screen, so I'll throw that up. It doesn't have my direct line because it's my proof and I've not been in my office, so I don't have a, a current business card. Um, but my email address on the bottom is the best way to is the best way to get a hold of me. And so um, yeah, and then yeah, we can if you wanna one on one times or if you you know you can pass that on to other folks as you come into if they're looking for help, we can do that too. Um, I'm not the biggest expert on on these. We have like a whole dedicated team that's focused on like the business um, stuff who are a little more familiar with the, you know, who are always like, oh, it's great. And I'm like, oh, I think I get what is going on. And then they just like are, you know, wizards with it. Um, but I'm, but you know, I, once I've got time to, time to prep and go through and as long as we're willing to uh, learn together and look foolish together, I'm more than happy to, to help figure, figure stuff out with that. Um, and then, yeah, there's an additional one that's really good. I didn't show today because it's, got some login issues and it's not letting us access it. It's called Merge and Intellect and it has a lot of um, similar kind of overlap with demographics now as far as you can look up, you know, information about businesses, about competitors, about their corporate structures. You can also look up demographic information. Um, and when it works and is available, it's really powerful. And it's just, I logged on yesterday and they're like, we're having problems with it. And so I, I was planning on demonstrating that today and then couldn't, but that's one that we've got as well. Uh, Patrick, I got a question. So um, I'm yeah. dating myself a little. Uh, back in the old days, I had to physically go to a library in college and then have access to databases. And I, I don't know oh, if they sure. were, I mean, some of it's probably fine. Is it really now? I mean, everything, obviously the internet changes everything. And so, I mean, is there resources for a business in a library or is again, literally everything's online anyways, and you guys just provide kind of that that uh, portal to all the these portal. different databases? It, it depends on what you're looking for. There are additional, you know, print resources that we're, that we have that we don't have online. So it, it depends on what you're looking for. If you're, you know, there's, we have, you know, big computer help sections. We've got, you know, various kind of focused stuff in our print collection that we don't, just because we have it in print does not necessarily mean that we have it digitally. Um, Sorry, <laughs> I thought the uh, the lid of the table was right there and it wasn't. Um, so I'm like putting my hands here. So, um, so like yeah, there's that which you know there there are physical items that you just would have to get. Most of the, you know most of the things that 15, 20 years ago might have lived in like a big series of binders on like a library shelf, for instance, are now digital. Um, at our five biggest branches at Sumner, Gig Harbor, South Hill. Uh, Lakewood University Place, I think those are the five. Um, job, we have what's called our Job and Business Center computers, and they are 
dedicated um, dedicated computers that have a three hour time limit as opposed to a one hour or two hour time limit um, that is for dedicated work on business stuff. And so if somebody, you know, is looking to start a business and do that and they don't physically have, um, you know, internet access or they don't physically have a computer or there's some sort of other technology need, um, that's something that we have available again when our branches are open and people are able to get into them. Um, so there's a mix, but there, but there is a lot of power uh, online. And right now, you know, there are some databases that the way they operate, they want you to only use them in libraries. So it's not a business one, but, um, oh my goodness, Ancestry. I was gonna say Heritage, that's not right. Heritage Quest you can use from home, but like Ancestry.com, we have their genealogy database. And for the last, you know, for most of this year, it's been able to access, you can access it from home with your library card number. And typically you can't, you have to use that in a branch as part of how that, like is how the licensing works for it. Um, and so I don't think that's the case with any of our business databases. I think they can all be done. I think they can all be done remotely. Um, but yeah, there are, there are, you know, there are additional, that's a lot of, a lot of those resources have migrated online and are available digitally as opposed to having, yeah, as opposed to living in the computer or that we have, you know, we have the terminal, the one terminal you have to go to that you can access the database from, you know. Yeah. Like, I know, but it's not just, a bloom, you know, go to your Bloomberg terminal. And yeah, yeah. It's just weird, again, not realizing, obviously, the library system has modernized along with all the other technology. And it's not just Google. There's, there's all this data. And I, again, as you were showing, I'm like, I just have these memories of accessing these databases inside oh, of yeah. libraries and then forgetting once you leave. And obviously, years have yeah. gone on wait, probably those are still available. Still going with those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so yeah, and if you, if you don't, if you're, not, if you're not using it or you're not in there seeing it, like, it's one of those things where I even knew, you know, starting working, having gone through library school and being like, oh, I understand, like, how databases work. And then they're like, look at these things and being like, and yeah, like, and I was, I know I was impressed by some of this. I'm like, oh, that's not what I would think of as, as being in the realm of what you could do with a database and so. Cool. No, great. Thanks for re-exposing, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. you know, former habits and processes that, again, just kind of lost track of things. Oh, it happened. It is, it is so easy to lose, lose track of that. But, you know, it's nice to get it. I'm glad to be able to come in and give mm -hmm. a refresher and point out that these are available because, you know, we, you know, we put your tax dollars to work. One of these are things that we're like, we think this is an important resource to be able to provide to community members. Um, and so we're always happy to be like, hey, guys. Take advantage of it. We're paying for it. So yeah. No. Thank you. Yeah. In 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 the famous words of Lauren Murphy at all of our networkings and meetings, who owns a library? <laughs> you <laughs> who own the library. library. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, if there's no other questions, um, Patrick, I do really appreciate you joining us today and oh, sharing all these amazing resources. Um, and like Matt said, re-exposing us to the wealth the library holds in the digital age. Um, so without further ado, I guess this we can wrap up and call it a day. It's you can go get lunch. Who knows? Maybe I'll go get an alcoholic beverage after that report. <laughs>